What I'm gonna show you is the simplest and safest way to be able to use Windows 11 without screwing up your entire setup. Now, there are several steps in this process, but I'm gonna walk you through each and every single one of them. Okay, usual disclaimer, before we start doing any major changes, you know that I like to have a safety net. So let's start by creating a restore point. In your Windows 10, go to the search bar and type there system restore. At the top, you'll see an app called create a restore point. Simply launch that. Bottom right, there's an option there called create. Click on that. Give this thing a name, something like pre-Windows 11. Something is gonna make you recognize that this is a state. Click on create, wait a couple of minutes. Now the safety net is in place. So if at any point you wanna undo everything we're about to do, all you're gonna do in your Windows 10, go to your search bar, type there system restore, launch the same app of create a restore point, but at the top, click on system restore, simply follow the prompt and you'll get your system back to the state before we made any of these changes. Okay, with the safety net in place, we're super comfortable to move on to step number one, which is getting the correct Windows 11 install file. Now, to use Windows 11, you obviously need the installation files. You do that by getting a file type called an ISO, which is basically one giant file that has all the files in it you need to install. Now, this is the important bit. Even if you have already downloaded the ISO from Microsoft sites in the past, you will need this specific Windows 11 ISO file, the one that bypasses the TPM requirements. Don't worry, I found a utility that does all the work for you. So head over to the link in the description now and check this out. Okay, once you click on the link, you'll end up on this particular website. Click the green button on the right hand side and then click on download zip. Of course, this is gonna start downloading the zip file somewhere to your computer. Remember where it's downloaded because we're gonna to have to go back to that folder. Once it's downloaded, open up the folder where you've saved the zip file. Right click on that and you're gonna choose extract all and then click on extract and it will open up another folder and in here you wanna click this folder. You're gonna look for this thing called media creation tool and you're gonna double click on that and this pops up, don't get worried. We're only interested in the screen on the right hand side. We wanna select 11. Once we do that, a whole bunch of options. The one we're interested in is create ISO. Choose that and it will create the ISO and save it to your computer. That's the file we're looking for. It's a 4.16 gigabyte file. It's saved on your computer. That's the installation file for Windows 11 that we need. So now that you have the right Windows 11 ISO file, let's move on to step number two, which is creating a virtual machine. There is an incredible piece of software from VMware called the VMware Workstation Player. This is a utility that allows you to run an entire operating system within your current operating system. This VMware is superb for testing new products or learning new operating system without the fear of damaging your main system. The workstation player that we'll use is free, but there is a paid for pro version that allows you to have far more customizations. So head over to VMware website, link is in the description below and let's carry on. So you've clicked on the link, you've landed on the VMware website, scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see the option to try Workstation 16.0 player for Windows, click on the download and it will save it to your computer. Once it's finished downloading, simply double click on it and run the installation file. Now, one thing I noticed is that you may need to install this in two steps. You install the first bit, it tells you that you need to reboot. And then when you do, it kind of doesn't do anything. So you need to reboot and then rerun the same installer to continue to the next step. But don't forget to bookmark this video before you reboot. Otherwise, you're not gonna know where to pick up from. Right, if you've done everything correctly, you'll have an icon on your desktop that looks like that. Simply double click on that. Now you'll see this option. Click on create a new virtual machine. Click when that pops up, all right? Just follow the steps, super easy. Click on that second option. Where's the ISO file? Click on browse. Remember that big file we downloaded under C backslash ESD. If it's not there, simply type it in and there it is. That's the big installation file. Click on that and then click on open. Right, don't worry about the little warning at the bottom. Click on next. When that next screen pops up, first option, Microsoft Windows, you wanna select that. And under the version, you can see a whole bunch of Windows versions are available. There isn't Windows 11 at the time of recording this. Choose Windows 10 or later. Select that. Click on next. Then it's gonna ask you to give it a name. You can be the name that's there or just give it a name that you'll recognize. I choose my Windows 11 so I know what it is. Click on next. 
Now, how much space are we gonna allocate for this new virtual machine? By default, it's 60, it says it's fine. I kind of bumped it up a little bit, give me a little bit of grade 64, and then I choose that. And then underneath that, I'm gonna choose store virtual in a single file. We're not planning on moving this around to another computer, so single file is fine. Click on next, a little bit of a summary, beautiful. Click on finish now. You'll see this thing pop up. What you wanna do, don't launch it yet. Go down to the bottom and click on edit virtual settings. Click on that. What we wanna do is we wanna bump up the memory from two gigs to at least four gig. You can do that by either typing it in or simply dragging this little icon up to four gig. Four gig is the minimum. Now you've done that, well, we're gonna hit okay and then let's get on to the next step. Okay, so right now what you've done is you've set up the virtual machine environment, but you haven't actually installed Windows 11 yet. So it's like having a second machine within your main machine. And just remember the virtual machine is sharing resources with your main machine. So if you have an old slow computer with four gigs of RAM, don't expect Windows 11 to be super speedy. So the next step is obviously do the installation. Okay, here we go. Now you're about to click on play virtual machine. As you do, make sure you click into this little box because you're gonna have to press any key when you see this message. There we go, the CD or DVD. Essentially that message is booting up from that ISO file, that installation file. Because when you do that, it's gonna start installing it. It's gonna ask you for the Windows activation key. Now if you don't have it, click on I don't have the activation key. It's gonna ask you which version of Windows you're about to install because you're gonna to have to activate this later. And then you're gonna choose, well, in my case, I chose Windows 11 Home. Click on Next. Make sure you choose the Windows version that you have licensed. Now here, choose Custom Install Windows. And you can see, remember that 64 gigs that I've given it as the space? Well, there it is. And click on Next. Now, simply follow the prompt as it continues to do its normal installation process. If this is a normal Windows 11 installation as if you were installing it on your main machine. So two things I highly recommend you do once you manage to log in is right click on the desktop, choose display settings, and then choose the screen resolution that works for you. Now, you can either maximize and take over your entire screen, or I like to have it in a smaller window so I can still bounce between my Windows 10 and my Windows 11, which I think is pretty darn epic. And the next thing that I encourage you to do is click on your search bar in your Windows 11, type check for updates and just see if there's any more updates since this video has come out. Make sure you get the latest and the greatest on your Windows 11 because congratulations, you're now running a fully fledged Windows 11 on top of your Windows 10. Check out this video over here with some Windows 11 customization that you need to know about and check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch Hit the head down here to subscribe if this video was helpful and since you got this far, well, that would be appreciated and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.